Okay, this is the second video on polar graphs. Um, the first video we looked at the Rose curve, and that's what I chose to graph first. Um, we also looked at a symmetry and how that can help us with graphing a polar graph. Um, it also helps to know the different types of polar graphs. These are the basic polar graphs. Actually, this looks really close to our Rose curve graph, um, except the, the number right before the theta always equals 1 right here. Um, if you change that number, then you're going to start seeing, getting a, a rose curve. Okay, so um, it helps to note that you know the cosine goes around the x-axis and the the sine uh, goes around the y-axis. And we could change where um, where this circle is. Like this circle can be down here if a is negative. Um, <coughs> But this type of polar graph is pretty basic. Let's look at um, let's look at a, a different one that's kind of popular, but not normal, I guess you should say, or you know, normal, I guess, compared to rectangular graphs. These ones are called limicons, and it's limicon actually means snail uh, in French, I think it is. But um, uh, this one uh, changes based on what um, what you what the ratio is between a and b. If uh, your A and B, if you divide those, if it's less than 1, then you're going to have the loop. If uh, your A divided by B equals 1, then you're going to have, uh, they call it the heart. Um, if uh, the ratio of A and B is between 1 and 2, then you're going to have a, a dimple. If your ratio is greater than 2, then uh, it starts flattening out and we almost get to uh, a circle. Let's take a look at this on, on Desmos. So the graph that you see right here, let's go ahead and go projector mode and get on the polar grid. Okay, the graph that you see right here is uh, when A is zero. So when there is no A, and that was what the basic graph looks like. But if we add the A in there, that's when we start getting the limicon, um, <coughs> or limicon. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, if I move this slider over, it changes my value of A. And we start seeing a little, a little loop right here. Now that loop um, is only there when A um, and B, uh, when you divide them, you get a, a value that's um, less than 1, but greater than 0. So right here, it just has to be between uh, 0 and 1 See, as soon as we get to 1, we lose, the, we lose the loop. But if we go less than 1, then we have the loop. If we, um, let's change this to a 4. Okay, wow, it's really big there. Uh, we, we, we can make our loop a little smaller. Um, <coughs> uh, but now, A just has to be between 0 and 4 in order to have a loop. Uh, once we hit 4, then we don't have a loop anymore. Now, why is that? Because uh, when we have 4 right here, uh, 4 divided by, I'm sorry, yeah, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And when it equals 1, you have the heart going on. It comes to a point. <clears throat> if it's less than 4, then we have a ratio that is less than 1. So if we go 2 divided by 4, then we have 1 half. 1 half is less than 1. That's why we have a loop. So if this value right here is bigger than this value right here, then we're going to have a loop. Well, what happens if um, the, z the A is uh, bigger than the 4? See that right there, the A is 3. What if this A is bigger than the 4? Um, well, let's see what happens. Uh, if we go bigger than the 4, that's when we start losing the point of the heart and we start getting a dimple. Okay, uh, that's what it's called, a dimple. And so and w the bigger A gets, the more circle-like it looks. There, I actually just changed the, the, my limit here to 30, just to show you. See, it just looks more and more like a circle. And that's because um, A is getting to be a lot bigger than B. And when I go A divided by 4, I'm not getting anything close to 4. And it's getting farther and farther away from 4. Um, so anyways, this is a limicon. And uh, the ratio between the B and the A determines what your limicon is going to look like.
One last thing. Notice that um, that the limicon is going around the y-axis right here. If I change this to cosine, now it's going around the x-axis. Everything still behaves the same, except now it's on the x-axis. Oh, that's neat. It just inverts it when you go negative. Sorry, I'm having too much fun playing right here. Uh, but yeah, you can hit play and yeah, this gets really neat. <coughs> Wham. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, so, anyways, that's that's the limicon. Um, most limicons that you will see uh, will go around the x-axis or the y-axis, and so it looks like, as you can see, you will always have some kind of symmetry. You'll have symmetry around the y-axis or symmetry around the x-axis, at least for the the basic graphs, which is what we're working on right now. <clears throat> now, uh, let's see. Let's take a look at one last type of polar graph, and it's called the Lemniscates. <laughs> I don't know how to say these, I'm sorry. Uh, Lemniscates. Lemniscates. I don't know. Um, but this is the form that they take. Uh, <clears throat> that there's, a, there's a 2 multiplying to theta, always, and then r is squared. And most, like, a is squared 2. And the reason why a is squared is because this, uh, the square root of a is going to be your distance from the origin to the end of the loop. Uh, this has symmetry about the pole, about the origin. And so if we were to test the symmetry for this one, then it would be true um, if we plug in a negative r. So if we plug in a negative r here, we would get a true uh, a true uh, equation, an equation that matches the original equation. Here uh, it would be true about the y-axis. Let's uh, go ahead and graph one of these by plugging in points. Actually, no, I'll do that on my next video. Anyways, uh, the reason why we would want to know all these different types of polar graphs is because if you know the, how they're going to look, then you know uh, what to expect when you're graphing it. Just make sure that your graph is curvy and that it looks like one of these when you're graphing polar equations.